The markets appear to be in a bit of a dark corner at the moment. And in fact, uh, some are calling for a full-blown banking crisis just around the corner, whether or not that's going to happen. There are always pockets of interest in the markets to watch out for. Today, now we're talking about the mining sector. But before we get to that, let's take a look at the big picture with our guest, John Mayer from SP Angel. John, welcome. Um, big picture, first of all, before we talk about your favourite subjects as a mining analyst, I want to talk about where we are and what's happening in the markets, because uh, we are just talking before the Fed is expected to raise interest rates, Bank of England tomorrow. Uh, again, likewise, we could well see an interest rate rise. What's your view of things, big picture-wise, on where we are? Clearly, the, the central banks focused on, in, on interest rates and, and inflation. Uh, so we have to respect that. But at the same time, they also want to, to maintain growth within the economies. We've got a banking crisis which is still rolling on. Probably more regional banks might go down. I know that in many cases they'll be supported uh, with different forms of bailout. That they'll, they'll be a bit of moral hazard, so managements will change, that sort of thing. But at the, at the end of the day, I don't think this is going to be allowed to impact uh, economic demand, uh, ongoing growth. I don't think the world is about to collapse from this. What we've seen with commodities is commodities have come down quite naturally. There's a, there's a risk off trade there, but it, there's also been a degree of deleveraging of commodity traders. So Credit Suisse lending money to various traders, particularly in Switzerland. Uh, those traders will have gone for a more risk off approach. So they'll have mm. sold cargoes of oil, uh, consignments of nickel and, and, uh, and copper, for example. But we're already seeing those commodities pick up again. Oil is certainly picking up nickel, copper uh, and, and, and aluminium all back on the rise. So I think, yes, I, I won't call it a flash crash because it ha hasn't been a crash, but I think this is a fairly short lived crisis. It might bump along the bottom for a bit, but it's definitely providing buying opportunities. Let me let me bring up a chart of, um, of crude oil. Uh, this is this is US crude oil, WTI, uh, West Texas Intermediate. And you talk about this drop here. Yeah, it's, it's not quite down as far as it was back on the 2nd of December 2021. So we got that level of support at 61.55 below where we are. But to be fair, it has come down tremendously, $120 down to 69.54. This to me describes the incoming potential recession. Are you not worried about that? I mean, that surely is what's being priced in here, isn't it? I, I would be concerned about it. And I think there's I think a lot of this is because of inventory build, because of China being locked down effectively for the first two months of the year. In fact, they were coming out of lockdown, but a lot of the Chinese people were off catching COVID. Then they had the Lunar New Year, a bit of recovery there. And China is definitely back to work now. We know that they've run out of uh, drugs for treating flu, which is unfortunate. So they're following the same path that we did over here. We've had a bit of a flu crisis this winter, and we're coming out of that now, which is great. Uh, and I'm straying off, my, straying off my specialist subject, which is mining more than healthcare. But we do have a healthcare team at SP Angel, which is quite useful for this sort of stuff. So we do see China getting back to work. We see the demand picking up. But this inventory build has very fortunately pushed energy prices down. Uh, also, Russia is pumping as much as it can, selling that through India and China mainly. So there's quite a lot coming into world markets. This is very good news for inflation, because if you think four of the five big inflation drivers in the US and, and actually in the UK as well, uh, energy related oil or, or diesel and gasoline, uh, other energy products, natural gas, those prices have come down quite heavily too. Uh, so inflation will come off. Although we've got a bit of a rise in inflation in the UK at the moment, um, it's definitely going to come down because of that. The fifth inflation driver was used car prices. Right. Now, there are a lot more semiconductor chips around for car makers these days. So the automotive trade is expecting price, used car prices to come off this summer quite heavily as a lot of new new car production comes into the market. So that's that's all good news for central banks. And I think central banks will be aware of this and they'll be saying, well, we, we don't have to go too heavy on interest rate rises right now. We'll just show that we're we're still focused on this, but we'll let that come off. And I think you know, nobody wants to kill kill growth in the economy, certainly in the UK, I'm sure in the US. So I think we are still going to see that. And particularly within the new energy metals, uh, copper, nickel, tin, those sorts of things, 
I think that there's ongoing strong demand, and we're seeing we're seeing um, evidence of that. Mm. Well, let's, let's let's bring up a chart of copper because this is a good example, isn't it, of where perhaps maybe we have this. You were talking about this rise that we've seen in the last couple of weeks or so, bouncing off this line of support, eighty four forty two. What is it about copper particularly that we like? We've spoken about this before, I know, and inclusion is a is a very old and uh, over I won't say overused, but it is a, a it's a very good barometer, I guess, of some parts of the economy. Um, why is copper holding up better than oil? Well, I think there's fundamentally a lot of demand for it. There's not a lot of spare copper in the world. Production has been interrupted in Latin America, particularly in Peru, where they had a lot of local protests interrupting supply chains. China has been using plenty of it. There's, there's no doubt about that. And then, you know, if you're building wind farms, solar farms, uh, electric vehicles, that you they all use a lot of copper. Mm, yeah. Um, just quickly run through some of the other metals, just so if we can go back to the charts, because I think it's worth looking at this in the context of some of the other uh, metals we've talked about. Uh, this is nickel, uh, the big LME crisis, of course, really taking over that chart there. But if we focus in on that, that has uh, reached uh, recent lows. Uh, and just to take a look at another area of the market, aluminium, another one where we've seen tremendous highs we saw uh, back in the um, uh, real highs we saw back in March 2022, uh, way above where we are at 2284. So there's a downside there. As you say, all contributing to this idea, we've got perhaps maybe a little bit of a relief on some of the inflationary aspects of what this is this is doing. The problem is for me is about, especially when talking to you, who have a, a lot of small cap clients, uh, interest rates are rising. Um, disregarding what's happened to metal prices, they do borrow money. And when you're borrowing money, it increases the cost. And that puts a lot of stresses and strains on the small cap sector. How do you feel as someone that has a very close relationship with small cap companies about this very difficult environment? Well, mining companies have always been forced to pay a lot of a lot of money to, to, to borrow money. There's no doubt about that. So they try and do as much as they can on equity. Uh, but the big banks are there for for funding those those projects as they come along. And frankly, two or three points on the interest rate isn't going to make much difference to them. And I I would say that actually metals prices are so are still very strong in many cases mm -hmm. copper is still eight thousand eight hundred dollars a ton nickel is still over twenty two thousand dollars a ton these are much higher than they were in past years and so yeah. the interest rate rise is is not a big deal for these for these things given that the margins are so much higher than they were or they should be so much higher yes there's a little bit of inflation in the sector but that 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 rose and and has since come off quite a lot anyway and the only companies that will make things work are the ones that that can optimize and and build projects more cost effectively so if you look at the lithium companies the capital cost of your average lithium uh, hard rock project somewhere under 100 million dollars that, that's not very much for the mining sector and therefore the interest rate isn't going to be a big deal for these guys mm. um, let's talk a, a little bit about some of your clients and some of the companies I know you have written about recently I want to bring up a chart here for Atlantic lithium talking about the lithium space uh, just explain why we've seen this drop here clearly I mean lithium is one of these new metals isn't it that everybody's talking about because of the battery um, increase in use of batteries um, what what's what do you like about Atlantic Lithium, and what's your relationship with them? So we act as nomad and broker to Atlantic Lithium, so we get, get that straight. Mm -hmm. um, we like it because it's, it has a resource. That resource is well defined. It's worked through a pre-feasibility study, so we know what a lot of the numbers are. are you know, we know that they're pretty close to where they're going to be in a definitive feasibility study, which is what you take to the banks. In fact, they don't need to go to the banks. They are backed by Piedmont Lithium, which is an American lithium refinery company, and they're 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 close to Tesla, uh, which is which is very helpful. In fact, they have an agreement to supply lithium uh, for the batteries for Tesla. So that is moving fast, and and speed is is always important in the mining sector. So it, they should be able to get into positive cash flow within a year of, of, of getting their mining license, maybe a year, maybe 18 months. These, plant, these projects are quick to build. They put in something called a dense media separator. Normally, it means they can pr produce spodumene concentrate very quickly. And, and they, they've got a bit of a media campaign on at the moment because they're just try, they're trying to convince, I think, the Ghanaian government that they are you know, they're trying to show them exactly what they're doing. Mm. They're really serious on pushing this forwards and that this is to the benefit of the Ghanaian government and the Ghanaian people. So we are, we're quite close to what's going on there through, through Atlantic and through other companies working in that area. And we think that's a very good. We think it's a good country to operate in. Yeah. They are the, the the Ghanaian sovereign wealth fund is looking at putting about thirty million dollars into the business. Then this this all tells us that there's a lot of local support. 
It's interesting, isn't it, when talking about metals prices, quite often you get uh, new um, developments pop up in places that you wouldn't necessarily want to be exposed. Some of the more um, difficult dictatorships around Africa, particularly, where you get a lot of these mining companies begin to trade. And so mentioning that in the context of a relatively benign um, environment is quite an interesting uh, story for Atlantic Lithium. What about other stocks um, you've got your eye on at the moment? What's going on? Well, if you want to go to a re really risky country, Cornish Metals is, is operating <laughs> in Cornwall. Okay. And uh, we, we like this. <laughs> It, it, again, we act as nomad and broker, right. but um, they're well backed. Uh, the Blue Vision Fund, backed by Mick Davis, has um, has backed it, and along with uh, Lansdowne as well. Mm -hmm. So you've got good institutional support. They they're just de they're starting to de dewater the old um, South Crofty tin mine. In fact, where I started my mining career many years ago, and it, it, you know I'm, we're not just in this because you know. Because we because we like the old mine, but they've made a couple of new discoveries at United Downs and a, a, a very new discovery at something called Carn Bray, which is within a kilometre of the old infrastructure, mm -hmm. and they'll start mining out of this in the next few years. And I think this is a very sure project to go ahead. So the banks will be lining up to finance it. Uh, the equity market is there because you've got good institutional support. We know the tin is in the ground because they're they're demonstrating that improving it all the time. And I know as an old miner from that mine that when you close, when the mine was closed, plenty of tin was left in the old working stokes. Right. So th this, this, all, this is all good for this company going forward. So they've just got to build the processing plant, which is a relatively simple thing in the tin industry. There's nothing complicated about tin, no nasty chemicals, nothing, nothing, nothing environmentally difficult. And, and push the button to make this work. So, it costs a lot of money to take it out of the ground. I mean, wages alone in this country must be far higher than any of the African countries we normally talk about when we talk about small cap mining companies. How do they, how do they deal with that aspect of it? Well, I'm not sure wages are that high in the middle of Cornwall, which is a, is, is okay. a slightly poor point, area. Point but, but thankfully in this industry, there's a lot more automation than there ever used right. to be. So uh, yes, and that's important from a health and safety perspective. Mm -hmm. Uh, but yeah, I mean, we, we know how to work these mines. We know how to make them more efficient. The industry has moved on a long way in the last 35 years, thankfully. And the, these will be much better places to work in. Mm. Um, before we went to where I asked you if there's another company you want to talk about, and Greenrock came up in the, in the discussion. And I, I made the point that we've got a break of the recent uh, lower lows. Uh, and one would look upon this and think, what's going on? Um, but there's a story to tell. What's your relationship with Greenrock? Again, we're nomad and broker, so we are close to this. The, com the company's operating in Greenland. It has a very good quality uh, graphite deposit. So the, the quality of the graphite is good and the grades are good. And we see Greenland as an excellent country to work in. You don't want to be in Greenland if you're doing uranium, because they don't like that. Right. You know, they, they, and you have to be careful about if there's any other toxicity uh, in the ground mm. that you're mining. But this looks very clean, and, will, and it should be very easy to mine. And there's a good chief executive in there, Stefan Bernstein, mm -hmm. making it all happen. There'll be uh, lots of uh, development funding for this because it's Greenland. It's, Greenland is within Europe, so that's good from a battery metals perspective. And I think graphite is going to be a, a battery mineral that will, that will do a lot better going forwards because there's a lot more demand for it coming out of Europe. Nobody wants to be buying this, all of this from, from China because we don't want to be beholden to China. China controls the graphite industry at the moment. Lots of opportunity to add value to the graphite, maybe by mixing it with a little bit of graphene to help those battery anodes work. Other industrial markets for this material as well. So we think that the battery quality graphite price will go up quite a lot. In fact, that's normally at the lower level, to be perfectly honest. So you get within graphite, you get jumbo flake, medium size, small size, and you get small spherical, which is what they use in the anodes. And if you can, if you can improve the quality of that small spherical, then you can improve the price of it a lot. Mm -hmm. So we think that Green Rock is really well placed for this. And yes, the, the share price has been under pressure and it's had a tough time. I think this is a great time to actually start picking some up. Mm. Um, going back to what we were talking about at the beginning, you know, the current market environment is difficult. When we're talking about small cap stocks, quite often they get washed down, but the baby out with the bathwater really, isn't it? When you get, get a market drop like this, you get everything gets washed away, or not washed away, but washed to a point where it becomes really good value. And I think let's end on a positive note and emphasise this point I think that should be made about the fact that there are opportunities out there for companies that are under the radar. And as I say, I've seen their share prices 
annihilated for reasons other than the fact that they might not necessarily have a particularly good asset. But in some of the companies you're talking about, we're talking about quality assets, aren't we, with an opportunity in the future. Um, so there must therefore be opportunities in buying some of these stocks. I think you're right there. I mean, there are always risks that, that are difficult to quantify. You know, maybe somebody in the management dies. You know, we, 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 we see mm -hmm. things like this. Um, but I think in these cases, these companies are pretty solid, pretty secure. And I think notwithstanding what might happen within the overall market environment, they ought to be going better. Mm. OK, John, thanks so much indeed for joining us. Uh, pleasure to be able to catch up with you once again in the studio. That's John Mayer from SP Angel with a look at some of the mining opportunities at the moment as we see uh, banking stocks continue to uh, uh, work through what some are perceiving as a, a current crisis within the sector. That's how it's uh, making itself felt across the, uh, the mining sector as things stand there at the moment.